Hello students, today we will be talking about a non-chordata phylum that is the Porifera. Now the question arises that why this phylum is called as the Porifera? Porifera means what? Pore bearing organisms means the characteristic feature of these organisms is that that they have many pores in their body. These members are also called as sponges means we can say that the common name of the phylum Porifera is the sponges, right? Now, what is the habitat where they, where they are living? So, mostly they are found in the marine water, but there are few sponges which are also found in the fresh water such as the spongilla, okay? Now, they may be solitary, they may be solitary, for example, cyclone, or they may be found in colony such as the leucosolinia. So, altogether we can say that they can be solitary as well as they can be colonial. Some members are solitary and some members are colonial. If we talk about the body wall, body wall means how many layers are there on their body. So, they are diploblastic. Always remember that porifers are diploblastic means they have two body layers. The outer layer is called as ectoderm and the inner one is known as what? The uh, endoderm or we can also say that it is also called as pinecoderm and coenoderm. Now, the pinecoderm consists of special cells known as the pinecocyte cells and the coenoderm consists of special cells known as the collar cells and the special feature is that that in between these two layers, right? that is the pinecoderm and the coenoderm, a gelatinous layer is also present and this genitalious layer is named as mesenchyme. This genitalious layer is named as what? Mesenchyme and the special feature of this gelatinous layer is that, that it consists of special cells, it consists of uh, the amoebocyte cells. It consists of special cells called as amoebocyte cells which are of various types, which are of various types. Say for a type of amoebocyte cell is called as an archaeocyte cell. Archaeocyte cells are undifferentiated cells. They are totipotent cells. They are having the power to form any cell. In, uh, in fact, they are having the power to form sex cells, right? Such as the sperms and the ovas can also be produced from these archaeocyte cells, okay? They are also consisting of chromocyte cells. Chromocyte cells, as the name is indicating, they are the pigment cells, right? They also contain uh, some cells which have reserved food granules and such type of the cells are called as what? The thesocyte cells, okay? Now, what type of cavity is found in the porifers? What type of the cavity is found in the sponges? So, the cavity which is found in the sponges is called as the spongocele cavity or we can say paragastric cavity and this spongocele cavity is lined by special cells and that special cells are called as what the collar cells okay if we talk about the body organization if we talk about the body organization so they are having cellular grade of body organization right means in them the tissues are absent though they are lower grade of multicellular organisms but the cells are loosely packed they are not able to form the tissues so we can say that though they are multicellular but they are having cellular grade of body organization. Now, as in the beginning only we have said that the porifers are the pore bearing organisms. So, now the question arises that what type of pores are present on them. So, always remember that they are consisting of two types of pores. One are known as the ostia, another is known as the osculum. Ostia are many in number and they are meant for the entry of the water. Once again, I am saying Ostia are many and they are meant for the entry of water. Osculum is one. Osculum is one and it is meant for exit of water. What about the symmetry? Each and every organism is having uh, some sort of symmetry. But remember that if we talk about the symmetry, so some sponges are having radial symmetry. They are radially symmetrical while some sponges are asymmetrical. They are not having any specific type of symmetry. If we talk about the shape, so they are having variable shape. Their fakes, the, the different type of the sponges have different shapes. 
some are was shaped some are urn shaped okay some are circular some are cup shaped some are cylindrical so all together we can say that they are variable in shape okay now sponges are also having skeleton uh, usually sponges are having skeleton only few sponges are not having the skeleton that i will be talking later in this video okay so sponges usually have a skeleton and this skeleton is made up of spicules the spicules may be made up of calcium or the spicules may be made up of silica so altogether we can say it as that they are having calcareous or siliceous spicules or we can say the the skeleton is composed of spongin fibers now the very peculiar feature the very important peculiar feature which is uh, found in the porifers is the presence of the canal system right it is the presence of the canal system through this canal system water enters water enters the body and this canal system is important for the respiration excretion nutrition reproduction etc and this canal systems are basically of four types okay one is known as the ascon the another is sicon leucon and regon ascon sicon leucon and regon now to be remember he, here is that that uh, the the regon one the regon canal system is found only in the larval stages it is only found in the larval stages okay and if it is asked that which type of the canal system is most common out of the four ascon sicon leucon and regon so the ascon type of the canal system is the most simple type of the canal system okay and you must also remember that all all the sponges generally are sessile sessile means they are attached to some substratum and they are immobile they are not moving from one place to another okay and if we talk about the digestion so digestion wise if we see so they are having the intracellular digestion all the major systems in the body are absent they are not having respiratory system they are not having excretory system they are not having circulatory system they are not having any type of the nervous system now if we talk about the reproduction if we talk about the reproduction so first of all you must know that they are hermaphrodite hermaphrodite means generally the sponges are unique that is they are the bisexual bisexual ones and reproduction may be by sexual means or reproduction may be by asexual means now the question arises that how do sexual reproduction occur okay how do sexual reproduction occur so sexual reproduction occur with the help of sex cells sexual reproduction occur with the help of sex cells and sex cells are of two types sperms and ova okay so sexual reproduction sexual reproduction occur by occur by sex cells sex cells are of two types sperms and ova and remember that sex cells are produced by archaeocyte cells archaeocyte cells which are undifferentiated cells i have said that they are totipotent cells and they can form any type of cells like here they have formed the sex cells okay now if we talk about the asexual reproduction so the asexual reproduction occur by gemule asexual reproduction occur by gemule it is a it is a type of internal bud it is a type of internal bud like this type gemule is like this type see here like this type the gemule is there this cup like structure is called as what the gemule and the special feature of this gemule is that it consists of archaeocyte cells it consists of archaeocyte cells and here is a pore known as the micropyle through which this archaeocyte cells come out and form a new organism so asexual reproduction occur by a internal bud and that internal bud is known as what a gemule and these are the spicules 
these are the spicules so sexual reproduction and asexual reproduction now if we talk about the development so development is indirect indirect means what larval stage present larval stage present now what type of larval stages so they have two type of the larval stages one is known as amphiblastula and another is known as parenchymula now amphiblastula and parenchymula so they have two type of the larval stages amphiblastula and parenchymula so we can say that development is indirect development is indirect and at the last you must also know that uh, sponges have sponges have great power of great power of a regeneration great power of regeneration so these all were the general features these all were the general features of the phylum porifera okay and because we are talking about the phylum porifera you must also know about the classification of the phylum porifera that you must know that the phylum porifera is classified into how many classes so we will be discussing about the three classes of the phylum porifera one is known as the class calcarea the second one is known as the class hexaectinellida and the third one is known as the class demospongia now this is a comparative account of the three classes very first i have written the character the habitat now the members of the calcarea are marine the members of the hexaectinellida are marine while the members of the demospongia may be marine or may be found in fresh water means i want to say some members of the demospongia may be found in fresh water such as the spongilla you can see here fresh water sponge is belonging to this class second one is the skeleton as we know very well that mostly the sponges are having the skeleton if we if we just exclude some of the sponges then the maximum sponges are having the skeleton and this skeleton is made up of the calcium carbonate spicules in the case of the calcarea while in the case of the hexaectinellida the spicules are made up of the silica that is known as the siliceous spicules while in the members of the demospongia generally generally the skeleton is made up of spongin fibers but the point to be noted here is that sometimes the skeleton may be absent means there is only one class of the phylum porifera known as the demospongia in which the in which we can say that the skeleton may be absent now we have talked about the skeleton and we have seen that it is made up of spicules but if we talk about the type of the spicules then what type of the spicules are there from from this one the question is asked in exams so in the class calcarea the type of spicules are three or four rayed okay while in the case of the hexaectinellida the spicules are six rayed and that's why the name is given hexaectinellida because the spicules are six rayed while in the class demospongia the spicules are one or four rayed spicules okay now power of contraction power of contraction you can see here that they are not having the power of contraction why because in the class calcarea the skeleton is present and that's why they are not having the power of contraction here also you can see that the power of contraction is absent but as in some members of the class demospongia okay then in the class demospongia you can see that the skeleton may be absent so in case the contraction may be present so power of contraction absent here absent here but present in the class demospongia okay now canal system canal system is the special feature of the porifers in the entire animal kingdom the canal system is only the feature of the porifers so they are having calcarea class members may have ascon sicon or leucon type of the canal system while in the case of the hexaclinida they are generally having leucon type of the canal system 
while in the members of the demospongia they may be having leucon type of the canal system or they have ragon type of the canal system now if we talk about the size what is the size so in the class calcarea generally the members are having a small size they are having 10 to 15 cm size while in the case of the hexaclinida class the members may have a size up to 1 meter while in the demospongia they are very big in size okay now coenocytes as we know very well that they are having special cells known as the coenocytes or the coeno or we can say it as that they are having the collar cells a special cells known as the coenocytes or the collar cells in the class calcarea they are big in shape while in both the hexaclinida and the demospongia the collar cells or the coenocyte cells are small in size okay now let's see some examples of the three classes now see in the case of the calcarea class the best examples are leucosolenia okay leucosolenia blanca leucosolenia blanca is the smallest sponge known so leucosolenia sicon grantia all these belongs to the class calcarea but if we talk about the hexaclinida if we talk about the hexaclinida then the 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 very important member is the euplectella euplectella is also called as the venous flower basket many times this is asked in the examination that venous flower basket is so venous flower basket is euplectella now it is also given as a marriage gift in japan why because this euplectella consists of an immortal pair of the shrimps and that's why it is giving as an uh, a given as an uh, wedding gift in japan okay the another example is hyalonema uh, that is also known as the glass rope sponge and the the demo spongia is consisting of u spongia which is very important it is asked many times in various examinations that bath sponge is known as so the bath sponge is known as the u spongia hippo spongia horse sponge is called as hippo spongia spongilla is known as the freshwater sponge kelina is also known as the dead man's finger okay and cleona is also called as the boring sponge so dear student this was the classification of the phylum porifera if you are facing any problem regarding any topic of botany and geology you can ask me in comment section